Well, I think that you're never going to have a city do great if it's just the downtown doing great and the neighborhoods are not doing great as well. So maybe you look at a city and you build it from the inside out like we're doing, but the neighborhoods are coming along to their credit as well. And I think that when you have a city, a lot of the jobs in urban cores, or a lot of jobs in cities are in the urban cores, so if there are jobs downtown, then hopefully a lot of people in neighborhoods are going to fill those jobs. That's a big part of it. But everything's connected to everything else, as I said earlier. Just like you invest, you were asking about the in private investment. I mean, just Henry Ford having that huge investment is just going to spawn off so many things. Not just attending your restaurants, other things is too. I mean, it's going to, <laughs> it's going to recruit high paid doctors and researchers to Henry Ford who will pay taxes to the mayor's office. And he'll do <laughs> and taxes, and he'll do good things with it. I mean, it just everything is connected to everything, any way you look at it. And I think that making big investments is very important. We have to, as Detroit, make big bets. I mean, what what Ford Motor Company and Bill Ford is doing at the train station—that's a big bet. General Motors moving to the Hudson site and then revisioning the Renaissance Center—big bet. What we're doing at Hudson's is a big bet. I mean, we need some big bets, and we also need. Small bets as well, but big bets at least get the, they get things going and they get the capital moving to the city. They're creating a lot of jobs. I think we just need to think big in Detroit and Michigan for that matter. The governor's commission on population um, reported, I think that which most of us already know, that growth is stagnation. Um, we're losing uh, population still, the state of Michigan. Detroit, uh, under the mayor's leadership, had uh, a modest increase for the first time, I think, since 1957. Yep. And that's in large part to the work that you're doing. And I'll give you some more stats on the population. So if you haven't read this, for the 20 year period between 2000 and 2020, Michigan grew the population 1% total. The nation on average is 18%. That's another thing that's gotta, we gotta really work. We gotta bring people here. And I think starting with the retaining our own kids is the, is the first place, but there's other places as well. So from a policy perspective, we've got a room full of policymakers and policy influencers here. What needs to happen from a policy perspective to, to allow that to hasten and, and catch up since we're so behind? Well, I think the, the big three things that we have to look at are, and again, I'm going back just to the young people. So we've done all kinds of surveys on what they want and why would they move to one city versus another city? I mean, affordable housing is key. And it's not, that's just not for young folks, that's for everybody. I mean, we need to have affordable housing. We need to have, you mentioned it a few times, we need to have a vibrant, dense, populated urban area where, the, where there's action and where they can have fun and do their thing, whatever they do at night. I'm not going to comment on what they do, but at least a lot of, <laughs> you know, a lot of options. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm and not going to. And the third one is transportation, I think. All of them want transportation. What specifically, what kind of transportation? All transportation. I mean, I think we need transportation to and from the suburbs, to and from the airport, to and from Ann Arbor, maybe to and from Chicago eventually. We, we've got to have transportation everywhere.